This is my daughter on Man Crush Monday. She had Case Keenum hashtag let him play. So there you go. Just letting you know. All right. All right. Thanks very much, Sarah Eckert. All right. Time now to talk some Houston Rockets basketball. Andrew Chang is from Sports. He's a sports director at ITV 55.5. Thank you very much for spending a little time with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having Houston Rockets, uh, this is truly, you know, they talk about the NBA being global. The Houston Rockets may be as global a franchise as there is in the NBA. Is that fair to say? I would say it's definitely fair. After having Yao Ming come over here, you got all the China population that really embraces basketball. And then now having Jeremy Lin, he's definitely got all the Taiwanese people involved. So globally, over there in Asia, it's kind of spread out to everyone. And, and people that, that don't know this, uh, Yao Ming was a national phenomenon in, in, in China. I mean, he was when Yao Ming was born, his parents were, were both people that were that had played in the, uh, whether it was Red Army team or, or whatever right. the case may be. So it was a major story when, when Yao Ming was born. So they had followed him forever. And now Jeremy Lin picks it up. Is it is it? Which one was more popular? Because obviously the fact that both of them have been able to carry this on. Yeah, I would imagine Yao Ming was a little bit bigger in China. Yao Ming was a lot bigger in China because globally over there, he was born in Asia. Mm -hmm. So you got a huge population in Asia that's really loving the fact that you got someone over there representing in the NBA. But Jeremy Lin, with the Linsanity deal and all that, has really kind of blown up to where he's got a lot of fans as well. Has that changed the, the, the worldwide, or at least the Chinese, I don't know how much you can speak to the... The, the national way of thinking in China, but the fact that the way Yao Ming came over here and was so accepted on a global uh, on a global chasm from the standpoint, does that help Chinese relations with the way they look at things and how? Because I mean, let's face it, it was a big deal for not only Wang Zhuzhu. Wang Zhuzhu had to defect, correct, and then. Yao Ming to come over here was a big deal. It was. They had to go through a lot of red tape to get him over here. So the effects of having Yao Ming over here really translated to over to, to other things because it westernized. China's already getting westernized as is. Right. So to have Yao Ming over here definitely made it a lot easier for the relations for the United States and China and then for any of the westernized countries to deal with China. So he had a huge effect with it. How big? How close are you to Yao? Do you do you spend? I mean, do you do, you know? I know he's staying in China. He's going mm -hmm. to college in China right now. But uh, he is a guy that likes to get back and forth. He doesn't have any problems going, moving back and forth, right? No, now. if he needs to come over here, his visa will be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. He definitely can get here and, and do whatever because as Yao Ming coming from China to the United States, you know, he's Yao Ming. So it's not hard for him to do it. Other people, it might be a little bit more difficult. Right. Now, did, is every team have, I know, Peak Shoes was a big deal. Is it Peak, the, 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 the company in China that... that, that Shea Battier now endorses a lot of, and that's all of that was because of Yao Ming, right? Correct. A lot of it had to do with the globalization that Yao Ming brought here. Um, and, the, and it was good that Yao Ming came to the Rockets because there's a pretty big Chinese community here in Houston. It's an extremely international city. And I don't think, I think people that, that, that aren't from here don't realize, first of all, it's the fourth largest city in the country. Secondly, being, being that it's a coastal city, mm -hmm. it's got a great deal of, of international flavor to it. Uh, but uh, as far as the Rockets are concerned. I mean, you know, it, it's a good relationship that works both ways. What about this team? I mean, because you're looking at, you know, let's talk basketball for just a moment. Sorry. But uh, what about this team? It seems like they're starting to come together a little bit. Uh, it's going to be some bumps in the road, obviously, early on. What are your thoughts? I think there's some growing pains. They're obviously very, very young. You got Dwight Howard, who's pretty much the veteran on this squad. So what you're seeing is that there's just, Mikhail's trying to get the rotation right. Um, and with Yao, Jeremy coming off of the bench, that definitely helps out for the second team because he's shooting first now. Uh, well, you're, because Jeremy, I mean, I've, we've talked about this with a lot of different people. I just think the fact that he's been healthy for an offseason, mm -hmm. not necessarily during the season, healthy for an offseason when he could work on his, the one part of his game that he needed to work on the most, which was his jump, jump shot. shot. Correct. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, he's shooting 42% from three-pointers. You see him making those little 17, 18-footers. So that's definitely helping out with his game. What did you make of his comments when he was in China in the offseason? And he talked about, I had the weight of the world on my shoulders. I felt the pressure of the, everything that had happened in New York. And now they would given me this big contract in Houston. And, and I felt like I had to be the guy. I didn't sleep. I didn't eat. I really felt the pressure. Do you feel like he's much more of a comfortable guy in his skin right now? Definitely. you got to remember, a week before the season two years ago, before we got James Harden, he was the face of this franchise on 59, everywhere that you look. It was all Jeremy Lin. Then when you brought J James Harden in, it kind of relieved some pressure. And truthfully, we would like the Lin Sanity to die so that people would understand that it's not a phenomenon. 
It's the fact that he's a good player. Right. So it's good to have that stress off his back because it's definitely going to make it easier for him, and he can make those shots. Uh, it's all about, I mean, so much about where you're standing when it happens. I mean, the fact if he had been a Milwaukee Buck, I said this a hundred times, if he had been a Milwaukee Buck with that 17-game yeah. stretch, it would, it would, nobody would have ever known anything about it. All right, watch out for Layla Rahimi because she can throw some different things at you different ways. I, I appreciate Just, that. All right, ITV 55.5. She'll be on your show tonight, right? Yes, sir. All right, very good. Thank you very much, Andrew Chang, the sports director at ITV 55.5. Visiting with this talk with Houston Rockets. Stay with us. We'll come back and talk with Damon Jones. More Rockets talk when we come back.